coming up next on Amsoil Championship Off-Road. After a summer of red-hot racing, are you ready to crown some world champions? It's Championship Saturday from the Big House, Crandon International Raceway. Can CJ Greaves continue his domination of Pro 4 and both side-by-side -side divisions? Will this be a championship weekend for the silent assassin, Mickey Thomas in Pro 2? From the North Woods of Wisconsin, this is Haley Shanley and the 55th edition of the Polaris World Championships on Fox Sports starts now. Damn, here they come into turn one. Oh, hey, oh, Greaves! Oh, 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 wild roll up Craig. and over! Nasty crash! 150-plus horsepower about to unleash! Play flies, we're underway in Pro 2! There is thunder in the valley here in Crandon. Great back line! Wow, oh, heavy contact to Greaves! Reeves with a run, they're coming to the line, they make contact. But they rotate a little bit. Here comes Cole Beaver. Kyle Cheney is hunting down CJ Graves. Ah, Henderson stumped the truck. Who's going to get their truck to turn one first? It looks like it's Corey Winter, Jared Brooks, Keegan King. Hello everyone and welcome to Amsoil Championship Off-Road. This is the 55th Polaris World Championships. I am Shane Stetsny, he is Brent Smith. Brent, they call Crandon International Raceway the big house and I think this place lives up to that billing and then some. Yeah, absolutely. This is the mecca of off-road racing. If you wanna win one race in your season, this is where you wanna win it in front of this huge, huge crowd. Well, we'll see who writes their names in the history books here at Crandon today, but first, Let's go down trackside and check in with Haley Shanley. Now, this is a team we always look forward to seeing at Crandon and a few other select events throughout the year. RJ, how ready are you to finish the season in Crandon? We're excited. Uh, the Pro 4 has been running good all season. I think I've led laps in every race we've been a part of. The luck hasn't really been on our side. Uh, some self-inflicted, some just from contact. So uh, I'm ready. We've got three more chances out of here in Crandon and uh, the truck's running really good. We qualified first and I'm excited to, uh, to go race this thing. These conditions in Cranon always change, so it's kind of chasing that. I think we got a good baseline, and uh, we'll see what we got here Saturday before Sunday's uh, World Championship races. RJ Anderson here this weekend at the World Championship. Thank you so much, Haley. Well, before racing gets started, let's take a closer look at the challenges this track will provide these drivers. Let's look at our GoPro lap of the day. There's the starting line, long flying straightaway. Pro 2s, Pro 4s, absolutely over 100 miles an hour as they descend into turn one past what is now a packed hillside here at Crandon. Yeah, there's so many people here this weekend at Crandon International Raceway. You go off that barn jump, you really want to stay up top, up on that cushion and ride it all the way around to this big, big flyaway. Another high speed straightaway. Well, they're all over the track here at Crandon, but high speed straightaway down into the Polaris gravel pit. Couple different line choices through here. We'll see a lot of passing down there as well. And then the Polaris jump. Try to land, not off kilter, keep everything under control. This right-hander starts to get tight at the end. That's Calamity Corner past the finish line. A couple small roller jumps into the chicane section, sweeping left-hander, sweeping right-hander up and over the rise. Then comes the Argon Corner, another place where we'll see a lot of passing. We've already seen a lot of physical passing there in sportsman racing. And then they will fly all the way down the long back straightaway, cresting that hill. We'll see the Pro 2s and Pro 4s get a little bit airborne there. Absolutely flat out. Then, in the last second, hard on the brakes. The tightest corner on the racetrack, Cowboy Corner, next to the starting line. Then you fly down this long, long straightaway, the starting line, like Shane said, and you're seeing speeds well over 100 miles an hour in Pro 2 and Pro 4. Next up, it is time for Pro 2, Brent. Bigger field than what we're accustomed to seeing this season in Champ Off-Road. What can we expect from this expanded group of drivers in Pro 2? Well, we're going to expect a lot, a lot of talent out here this weekend. Guys like Corey Winter, he's looking to knock down some big races. But guys like Mickey Thomas and Ryan Beat, watch out. They're really fast. Well, you can hear that 750-plus horsepower under the hood starting to rev up. Getting ready. Phase up in the tower. Get on your feet. Pro 2 is about underway, and here we go. 20 Pro 2s headed down into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn one. Who's it gonna be, Shane? 
Looks like Ricky G, Kyle Kreem's gonna be there first. Rowdy Bean slides into third, winner alongside Bean as they head over the barn jump. But Ricky G with the early race lead. Everybody filing their way down toward the gravel pit for the first time. Dreams right away going to work on Gutierrez, trying the inside. Now it looks like Winner able to move up a spot as well. So Corey Winner into the top three, beat shuffled back to fourth. Everybody just eating Bruce, the driver in front of them. Yeah, that roost is for real, Shane. I promise I tell you that. Especially in the Pro 2, it's unbelievable what they kick up going through Argon Loop. Just trying to stay clean these first couple laps. You want to just pick your way through, try to not go through too many tear offs. Pierre is now starting to accelerate away from Kyle Greaves. You see that interval open up a little bit as they come into Cowboy Corner for the first time. Boy, Ricky G really hard on the loud pedal. He's coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one for the first time. They are just hard on it, wide open. Ricky G, Kyle Greaves starting to open it up a little bit over Corey Winter as they go past the crowd. Rowdy Beat still in that fourth spot. Just a little bit, Ryan Beat catching him by about a car length. So close to that K-rail, oh, Bond tying off that Polaris flyaway. Beat came down really nose heavy on that right front corner. Gotta be careful. Each of the suspension travel in the front, 20 in the rear, but you could use it up really quick if you overjump some of these big jumps at Grandin. Yeah, you actually have to check up on some of these jumps like the barn jump. You really don't want to overshoot it. Here's that battle for the lead still going on. Al Greaves trying to creep back up on Ricky Gutierrez as they go down the back straightaway through the Argon loop. Gutierrez way off to the left side, crosses back over to the right to set up for Cowboy Porter. Throws a big face for LaRousse. Back on the throttle they go. Looking to turn one about 100 miles an hour as they come past the crowd. Man, look at those sway bars. They're so soft in the rear of those trucks. They're just digging into this granite soil so nicely. Those Yokohama tires are really going to work on Ricky G's ride. Oh, and a little mistake there by Ryan Beat. Caught just a glimpse of him. He had to gather it back up. Reeves trying to keep the pace right now with Lee. Kyle Reeves actually has the fastest lap of the race so far that last time around. This track is going to get a whole lot faster for these Pro 2s as it dries out. Yeah, they threw a lot of moisture down. They just want to keep that dust down in this first half. Once it gets dug in, like you said, Shane, it's going to get really, really quick. It's Ricky G. Oh, Corey Winter goes around. Last year's points champion. Yeah, he lost a couple of spots. And Ronnie Anderson are all able to get by Corey Winter through Calamity Corner. There is Ricky G from Garden Grove, California, stretching the lead a little bit more over Kyle Greaves. Ricky Gutierrez coming back through. Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Still flat out wide in that board. Kyle Greaves, you wonder if he's playing a little possum. He's running that pace. You know he's always hard on the loud pedal. But... Mickey Thomas, by the way, 14th at halfway. That is all by design. Again, he just has to finish a couple spots better than last place. And he will wrap up the championship. But right now, we're going to check in with Haley here at the halfway point in Pro 2.
And that's when we put the word out over our radios to try and find out what is going on with Mickey Thomas right now. And we, you guys may be onto something. He may be playing it conservatively because, like you said, he only has to finish a few spots better than the back of the field in order to solidify a championship. So he's got to stay in this thing. And again, we're waiting on word. Did, is something going on with the truck or is, again, just playing it safe? But really, when you have been at this championship fight for so many years since he made his full-time debut with Champ Off-Road in 2020, he wants this so badly. So I don't expect Mickey Thomas to take any unnecessary risks out there. Well, we're about to go back. Green flag racing. It's Ricky G, Kyle Grease, Ryan Pete. Here we go. There's some fiberglass going off early. Yeah, a lot of trucks starting to shed some body panels as this race goes on. Oh, look at Ronnie Anderson giving the business there to Rowdy B. Right away, Green's going to work again on the 78 of Ricky Gutierrez. Look at that drive that Anderson gets out of the gravel pit. He's buttoned up to the back of Ryan B. We'll see if he can get to the bottom side here. It's possible that Ronnie Anderson is the man on the move here in the second half. Got past Keegan Kincaid on that restart. But everybody's still trying to chase down Ricky G. Wow, look at Ryan B backing it in like a pro floor, just hucking it in that inside section. And there's King Kincaid. He had catastrophic failure coming into this weekend. He lost the motor. He had to go out and actually our race leader, Ricky G, borrowed him an engine. So kudos to that team looking out. Meanwhile, Mickey Thomas running in the sixth spot, his championship almost completely in hand at this point. Wow, look at that gravel pit all torn up. That cushion is like three, four feet deep. As Ricky G, one more turn to go, Shane. Can the kid get the job done? Looks like he can, just has to make it through Calamity Corner. Checkered flag is out, your round 13 Pro 4 winner is Ricky Gutierrez. Second here in Pro 2, Ryan B. Or Kyle Greaves, excuse me, second, Ryan Beat in third. Yeah, Ronnie Anderson finishing in fourth, and there is your 2024 points champion here in Pro 2, Shane. Vicky Thomas getting it done. There is Ricky Gutierrez climbing out of that truck. We're gonna see a big celebration here from the 78. Ricky G, you are celebrating. It felt like a long walk up here with how long it took you with this crowd. You are celebrating with every step up here as you should be. So what does this win mean for you? Uh, just in terms of how special it is to end the season this way and you guys have had to fight for it. Crandon, man, it's just a special track and, and to be able to get a, a win here, man, it means so much to me. Um, you know, every year I have my whole entire family come out here and, and support me and watch me uh, just like they do all season. And uh, man, they're all here today. I freaking love all you guys. You guys mean so much to me. Um, man, like I said, this is such a special place. And I'm so stoked to get my first win here at Crandon. Our Pro 2 champion down on the podium with Haley Shanley. And we're laughing because it's literally raining champagne on us right now from the roof of the stage. Uh, Carl Shabitsky, once again, series president, issue this award. Uh, on behalf of everyone from Amzo Championship off -field, congratulations on your 2024 championship. Thank you. Mickey Thomas, we have been following your season so closely and for all the good reasons. So what's it mean to finally be able to pay it off here in a big way? Yeah, this feels like a long time coming. We've had a fast truck for many years and uh, to finally get this done just means so much. First and foremost, I just got to thank my family. You know, they sacrificed so much, especially my dad. He's believed in me since the beginning. Uh, got, gotten us all the way up uh, to be Pro 2 champions. When Amzoel Championship Off-Road returns, can CJ Greaves drive home another world championship in Amsoil Pro side-by-side? -side? From the broadcast booth to the podium, find out what drives Champ Off-Road announcer Brent Smith as he joins the fray in pro light. Later, let's celebrate off-road racing the Crandon way with a world-class parade downtown.
Enzoil Championship Off-Road is brought to you by Enzoil. Specialized lubricants engineered for what you drive. We are Amsoil Championship Off-Road, and we are here at the big house for the Polaris World Championships. Brent Amsoil Pro Side-by-Side -side coming at you next. This field, unbelievably talented. What can we expect from this one? Well, the gloves are going to be off like every other weekend. I mean, guys like Andrew Carlson, CJ Greaves, Kyle Chaney, they're ones to watch here this weekend because, hey, time's running out. Yellow flag. We are green flag racing for pro side by side. A Crandon and a huge jump from the 33. What a start by CJ down into turn one. He brought Rodney Van Epper and Kanan Baker along with him. And Carlson getting beat up a little bit. Getting shuffled around. We also have two cars tangled up at the top of turn one. Kyle Anala and Aaron Schwartz, both of those drivers, done early in this one. Everybody kind of spread out here in the early going. See Baker pushing just a little bit wide there through Calamity Corner. Cars have so much horsepower, all four wheels digging up this dirt. This track is going to come apart drastically, I think, from start to finish. There goes Owen trying the slide job in the gravel pit, not going to get it done. He yeah. took his shot there. That was a big move there from Owen. I don't know if I was expecting that one quite yet. Looks like we're going to come to our competition caution, though. That's uh, That would be why he's trying to make these moves right now. Tried a long way around there. It didn't work. There we are in our halfway caution at CJ Greaves out front. Rodney Van Effort in the number two spot, followed by the young guns. Baker, Google, Van Effort. CJ Greaves going to lead him up into the barn turn. Looked like Ronnie Anderson jumped out of line there to try and make a move on Owen Van Effort right away. And Greaves has been so lightning fast on the start of this race, and then again here on this restart. Looks like Baker now. Falling back into the clutches of Boodle. They're going to go three wide into the gravel pit. Baker trying to back it in, but so does Boodle. And Boodle's going to move up a spot around Kane and Baker. And we know the Anderson brothers don't do anything at any less than 100%. So you can tell that out of the box, that car oh. looking really good. But they're going to get tangled on Baker. Anderson goes around. He's going to have to wait a beat just to get faced back the right direction. So a little shuffling there. Win here in round 13. He's about to take the white flag. Owen Van Epper now trying the outside move here on Boodle. Oh, they make a little contact wheel to wheel. Van Epper still staying right there, trying to force the oh, issue. Big contact there. Big shove from Owen Van Epper to Boodle, and then Boodle had to back out of it a little bit, and more smoke now out of Boodle's car. Yeah, that gives Rodney Van Epper a little bit of breathing room in that number two spot now as these two continue to duke it out for third and fourth. Sneak up a little bit close. Oh, big, huge pump of smoke. It's on fire now for Boodle. Yeah, big trouble for Boodle. He hasn't started to slow down oh. yet whatsoever. And lap traffic now coming into play. Collected all three of those Yamahas, both Van Efferens. How is Boodle's car still running that fast? We saw the flames coming out the back of that car. There's the checkered flag for CJ Greaves here in round 13. He is also your Amsoil Pro side-by-side -side champion. Oh, and Boodle had some broken suspension parts as well. Rodney Van Efferens. Holds on for a second. Yeah, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, we figured we, we never thought we'd be sitting here. But thank you to everybody at Polaris. Um, there's a lot of guys that have chipped in, whether they were part of the race department or not, or just guys that work there, or guys that have knowledge there that have chipped in. So thank you guys for everything. That's what has made this Pro R come to, as far as it has. Up next at the Big House, family racing tradition continues. Wyatt Miller, grandson of NASCAR legend Del Earnhardt, continues his hot start. But there's another young racer on the horizon, and Avery Hemmer is ready for her debut today in Pro Spec. Welcome back once again to Amsoil Championship Off-Road Pro Spec. Next up here at the Big House, Brent, this is a very competitive class, an interesting mix of veteran drivers and some fun newcomers. Yeah, absolutely. Wyatt Miller, he's really looking strong throughout this season. We're looking for big things. But guys like Dylan Parsons, they're one to watch here. Flag pro spec headed into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn one. Amanda Nelson had the pole position. Looked like a really great start for Nick Visser as well, but Chris Vanden Nelson will lead them down into turn one. Visser right in tow though with Dylan Parsons in third and the thriller Wyatt Miller comes through turn one in position number four. And Porter and Glazy was crossed up, had to gather it back up. 
How about Avery Hemmer right in the middle of that field as well? Remember, this is her debut. She was the mod cart champion. Whoa, Miller up on the bike, had to set it back down. That's going to move Hemmer up another spot. Yeah, Avery Hemmer fresh off of a second place finish in mod cart earlier today. Our champion as uh, Nick Visser goes to the outside. Oh. Blade goes over. All the way over, one complete roll. Tried to set it back down. We'll see if he can get that truck fired back up. They will let these V6 trucks sing down the long straightaway. Back into Cowboy Corner, and Parsons, you can tell, trying to outbreak a little bit. Van Den Elsen now goes up on the bike. That's going to open the door for Dylan Parsons. And Dylan Parsons will take over the race lead. It's the halfway point has been reached, or is about to be reached, next time past the finish line. Wyatt Miller stuck a nose to the inside of Avery Hemmer in the gravel pit. Looks like he might do this. Oh, oh and Visser's upside down again. So all that work, fortunately for him, we're coming to that halfway point, like we said. As long as they can get that truck flipped back over in a timely manner and not drain too much of the oil into the top end of that motor, he should be able to fire it right back up. A lot to be decided here in the second half of Pro Spec. We are off and running. Parsons went right away on the downhill of that jump to get that run, and he was able to check out a couple of truck lengths. That's the smart way to take those restarts if you are the leader. We'll see if Van Den Elsen can get the power down. I'm curious to see. We haven't had to see, we haven't seen Avery ever have to pass yet. She's just kind of inherited all these spots. And now she gets to go to work and actually try to make some passes. Yeah, the, you're right, Shane, but I think uh, Wyatt Miller's got to worry more about Avery. Oh, it, Miller's off the pace. Yeah, something just let go on the number 73. Really hard to tell what that could have been. And meanwhile, Vandenel's gaining a ton of ground on Parsons as they come back into turn one. Right on the back bumper of Dylan Parsons as they come up the front stretch. But the pressure is on as we are just about at 90 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, this is going to be two to go once they get to the line. Look at Van Elsen right on the back bumper as they go into the gravel pit, making a little bit of contact. Gave him a couple shoves as they went through that corner. Mandanels and falls back in line once again, but the race is on. Two laps to go this time by. Follows him, follows Parsons around the cushion. Can he get a run? He closed quite a bit on exit. Here we go, Shane. I think he might be close enough to try and make something happen here. He's going to set up an outside in move. Can he force the issue? He drove, drove way wide on entry. Parsons the with a little bobble. They almost made contact. Dylan Parsons holds on for the win here at round 13. Vandenel's in second. And are we sure that that's a first-timer? Avery Hemmer, third in this one. Dylan, it wasn't essential that you won this one, considering you were in such good standing for the championship, but you still made it happen. You drove like it was essential. So what do you have to credit that performance to? Uh, I have all my crew. Um, I mean, we just, had to, we just had to start this race, I think, and so that put us in a situation where we could just go for the win and race. And um, we put on a great show with Chris, and um, it's pretty cool to have Avery up here. I, I went over and tested with them. Steve's like, you think she should race Crandon? And I'm like, absolutely. She looked awesome at ERX, so I'm like, let's go. Here we are, we second year in the truck and we got another championship, um, so. <laughs> Still ahead, find out if champion Jordan Burnmore can drive home another win to bookend his championship season. And voice of off-road, Brent Smith has left the broadcast booth and he's preparing to race in pro light. Truck's a rocket ship. John Holger Racing, what he did for me is just over the top. Those Geolander AT4 tires, they hooked up. It has been a stellar season for the Yokohama Hard Chargers, one of the youngest and most inspiring classes. Congratulations to today's winner, Dallas Carlson, your Yokohama Hard Charger at Crandon. Welcome back once again to the Big House here with Amsoil Championship Off-Road. We're in Crandon, Wisconsin. Pro Buggy next up on this one and three quarter mile track, Brent. Championships already decided. Jordan Burnlore clinched it around early, but there's a lot of other drivers that want to knock him off that number one spot here at Crandon. Yeah, I mean, Jordan Burnlore has been showing the way around this season, but hey, it's Crandon, Wisconsin. It's the big house. Anything can happen here in Pro Buggy. Ryan Burnlore, Herman Barnum, and Tom Schwartzberg also in the field, and we are underway. Oh, we got a car cross up, big contact down on the starting line. Yeah, that was Jaden Lemke and Jordan Burnlore getting involved there. Both drivers able to set it back down. 
And it's Mark Steinhardt first into turn one and a big stack up. Far upside down. Yeah, Brady Whitlock involved. Looks like the two of Ryan Schwalbe upside down and stuck on his lid. There was a couple other cars that kind of got collected in that mess as well, but everyone else able to get away. Yeah, I think a lot of these drivers are probably content to be spread out a little bit. Kind of wait for the track to come in, wait for that halfway caution. Again, everybody, I think they're uh, dealing with this wet track a little bit right now. Everybody just kind of feeling out this racetrack. Yeah, you can't really Whoa. go for Oh, big contact. I think Booth was all locked up. He absolutely was. All four tires locked up on the 51. Now he's caught up on the K-rail. See if he can get himself untangled there. Yeah, you better be careful. He doesn't shear off that right uh, side. It's already, already damaged up there just from what he went up and over it. So that arm bent up. Yeah, Billy Booth looks to be out of this one early. Tough break for him. Key big time crash. Now a red flag here. It's a couple different situations to deal with, not just McKee's car, but also Billy Booth parked in a uh, difficult spot to get him unstuck. Here we go. And Steiny kind of slow played it on that restart, trying to throw a curveball at everybody else. Right away, Dave Mason Jr. slides back in front of Cole Burnlore into second. Jordan Burnlore able to Hold on to that fourth spot on the restart. Now let's watch Dave Mason Jr. go to work. He's gonna try the bottom side in the gravel pit. He found a dry line down there. They made some contact. Oh, something happened to Steiny. I don't know, maybe missed a shift on exit there. He got rattled around a little bit. Steiny has a flat left front tire as well. So, oh, man. Big trouble for the number 31. Back up front though, Jordan Burnlore is caught back up to Cole Burnlore. There's Jordan Burnlore going to that inside. They're side by side. What do you see, Shane? Flat right rear on Cole Burnlore. That's why he lost all that ground to Jordan. So Jordan Burnlore now in the second. Cole Burnlore drove past the pin, so he's going to stay out there and try to fight that car with that flat right rear tire. One last time past the big crowd here at the big house. Oh, and oh. Mason way crossed up, and he oh, just he popped the tire. Oh, our leaders, they make contact. They're hooked together. Stuck on top of one another. Can Birdlor get free? And where is Bonacci? Is he close enough to capitalize? Here comes Lorenzo Bonacci with a full head of steam. Should be a local yellow. Can Birdlor get that car refired? He, he does, but how much damage is done to Birdlor's car, though, Shane? We're going to find out real soon. High drama on the final lap here for Pro Buggy. There's oh, definitely something wrong with Birdlore. Look at Bonacci just bonsaiing off that flyaway. So full course yellow is going to come out, but we are on the final lap. Birdlore trying to hold off Bonacci, but like you said, something maybe not quite right on Jordan Birdlore's car. He's got a bunch of damage on the front end. He's just fighting that thing. Yeah, can he hold on? This would be unreal. Birdlore parks it down on the bottom. Somehow survives for a win here in round 13. Jordan Burnlore, the champion. Jordan, one question, how? I, I don't know how, at, at least for this race. I, if you know me, I talk a lot and I am absolutely speechless. I mean, I, I made a mistake right at the start, got completely sideways, it was so wet. If it wasn't for Bo Ambos, my spotter, who kept me through, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, something's really wrong. I don't know, what's, I, the car's horrible. He goes, reverse, reverse! And I reversed, I stalled it, and I still was able to get it done. So. Crandon, baby! Woo! From thousands of campers in the Northwoods to a one-of-a-kind parade, the Polaris World Championship weekend is simply epic. Take along for a behind-the-scenes tour. Welcome back here with us at Crandon International Raceway. This is our finale weekend of the 2024 season and World Championship weekend, Brent. That comes with a very special event here downtown in Crandon, the parade. It's one of my favorite moments of the weekend. How about you? Oh, it's amazing. Just thousands of thousands of people just spreading through the town, looking at your favorite driver's cars, getting autographs, getting that merchandise. We've been coming here a long, long time, Shane. And if you're a kid or an adult, it's a great time here in Crandon. This is the iconic turn one at Crandon. Have, here they come into turn oh, one. And oh, Greaves, oh, wild rollover, Johnny up Graves. and over. Oh my God. Best 
Turn 1 at Crandon has been the spot for some iconic crashes. Pro 4 is next, along with one of the most spectacular Turn 1s in all of motorsports. Amsoil Championship Off-Road is brought to you by Amsoil. Specialized lubricants engineered for what you drive. Welcome back once again to Crandon International Raceway here at the 55th Polaris Crandon World Championships. Brent, it is that time. The meanest class in short course off-road racing is up next. It is time for Pro 4. What are we looking for in this one? Well, we're looking for great racing. There's a lot of talent in this field. More trucks here in the fall run. Guys like Robert Stout, Jimmy Henderson, they're looking to lay down another win here in 2024. Carlson, Cole Baker, and Keenan Baker. And we are underway in this one. Yeah, who's gonna get to Forest County Potawatomi turn number one first? It looks like RJ Anderson. John Green down on the inside. They make oh. big contact, big, big contact. Anderson facing the wrong direction. Everybody trying to dodge him. Henderson way off track, trying to get back on. And Paul Wolf just went for a ride. Oh, tough break for the wild man. Adrian Chenny as well. He broke that right front. All kinds of mayhem here. Cole Mamer out front here early on. Catches a shove there from Johnny Greaves. There is the wild man, Adrian Jenny. Tough break for Jenny. Paul Wolf out of this one early as well. We'll see if Anderson's able to get back underway. Johnny Greaves, the seven time champ, the Off Road Motorsports Hall of Famer, your race leader here early in round 13. Wow, look at Mamer backing it in through Argon Loop. Trying to muscle their way through. Look at all that standing water. A lot of moisture was put down on the track to try to keep that dust down. Sometimes I feel they throw a little too much down. No doubt about it, it is slick out there. Johnny Greens, Cole Mamer, Robert Stout running up in that third spot. That's a great start for him. Second weekend in the truck, raced at Grandin here in June, but only got one race day because of a rain out. Yeah, Robert Stout really looking strong. He hasn't been in the truck very much, and that shows you how much talent he has behind the wheel. You see Johnny Green going sideways. Yeah, it landed almost 90 degrees sideways, setting up for turn two. When you see the glare coming off the track, that sun as it's starting to go down, it's getting in their vision. Oh, absolutely. Really hard to see going in the back section as well. As if they needed one more issue to fight against on this racetrack. It's been a challenging track for our pro classes. Johnny Greaves up to the task here with two laps now in the books. Well, oh wow, we got problems. a parking lot down in the gravel pit. That's Robert Stout, tough break. Robert Stout, Johnny Kyle Hol Janey. Johnny Holger looks like he's down there in that Yokohama tires ride. Tough, tough break for them three. Oh, and possibly trouble for Henderson as we look up front. There is Johnny Greaves starting to lose that fiberglass hood. That could be a little bit distracting for him if it folds over into his field of view. At least for the moment, it's kind of folded toward the center of the cab. Johnny pitching it in sideways. Yeah, we're getting word. Johnny Greaves is getting the black flag. He's got to go serve a black flag for that contact. Well, that brings some intrigue into this one. That's going to turn the lead over to Cole Mamer. Looking for his first career Pro 4 win, and he is way out front. Got a change for second place. CJ Greaves has gotten past Andrew Carlson. We saw what I thought was a little bit of smoke from Carlson earlier. I wonder if maybe something going wrong on his truck. Yeah, I don't know. It's getting really tricky. You can see that sun just fading off into the distance, really hard to negotiate this turn. You can see it gets really calm through here. Yeah, coming out of the gravel pit, turning into Calamity Corner, that's where the sun just hits these drivers right in the eye. Not too bad dur during uh, this section as they're driving away from the sun. Cole Mamer staying in control here in Pro 4, round number 13. Green flag staying out, so at least one more lap before we reach halfway. And 
this would be so big for Mamer. He talked about all the work that he put in over the last two years trying to get this truck completely dialed in. I'll tell you what, it looks dialed. Cole Mamer, CJ Greaves, now Johnny Greaves gonna file in for the third place spot at the halfway. Yeah, Caden Baker running in the fourth spot, and that's everybody who's left. Everybody else has had some kind of issue. Of course, a couple trucks taken out with that melee in turn one. Pro four, we've seen this before. We saw it at ERX Motor Park in round seven. Sometimes it's a battle against one another. Sometimes it is a battle of pure survival. If you and your friends are putting together a fantasy short course team, Cole Mamer is not one to leave off your fantasy team. He's not just a great wild card pick. He's more than that. He's a solid pick through and through. And I'm looking at the speed we've seen from him really every time he hits the track. If all the pieces come together and really things go his way, because there's always that chance of unknown variables that can occur to any racer at any time in short course racing. But despite that, Cole Mamer has had wicked speed. And I'm going back just three weeks to Bark River International Raceway, and he threw down the fastest lap of the race before unfortunately ending in a DNF just to do a chance mechanical. Again, that one could have happened to anyone. So Cole Mamer right now, uh, he has the speed to hang on to this, but if I'm Cole Mamer, I don't want to see a competition yellow. We'll see what he is going to do with this restart for the second half. It's just whoever can make it to the finish, and we'll find out who can make it to the end of this one. Mamer, CJ Greaves, Johnny Greaves, Caden Baker, a four-way fight. Mamer dives deep into the gravel pit, trying to get that drive out. Both those trucks trying to fly off this Polaris flyway. We'll see if Greaves has anything for Mamer. I know he's gonna try to start picking him apart here early. Oh, for sure. Like I said, CJ wants to win this race. He knows the championship scenario. He's got that locked up. Now he is out for blood, but Mamer pulling away once again. Really impressive drive so far for Cole Mamer. Able to dodge the chaos when this race started. Yeah, CJ Greaves gonna try to reel in Cole Mamer. You see that lead, he gaps out in that back section. Going into Cowboy one more time. Well, Greaves just gained a lot of ground back though on Mamer. Johnny Greaves still right there in third. Oh, CJ is on the hunt. He is practically pushing Mamer into turn one. Yeah, Green's going to try to go on the inside here. He tried it and he slipped out. Going to try to do that crossover, get back underneath of Mamer, but Mamer running that fast line. Look at both of those trucks just dance over the cushion back and forth. Watch this right here, Shane. Watch him. He's going to get hard on the binders. He's going to try to dive underneath. Textbook move by CJ Greaves. Can he get that drive across the bottom? No, he can't get there. I think Mamer has found a line through the gravel pit that he really likes. It's not extremely fast, but it kind of toes the line between being fast and playing defense. It's going to be really tough for CJ if he wants to make a pass in the gravel pit. He might have to find somewhere else to get this done. Yeah, he's surging. Mamer's just got to stay on that loud pedal, try to stay and hold that gap. And there is still so much time left in this race, too. Just gotta limit those mistakes. Keep the hammer down as they fly down this long back straightaway towards Cowboy Corner. Here comes again. CJ down on the bottom. Can't get there again. Mamer, look at the rucks just going through that turn, just digging up some rocks. That was not a pass attempt by CJ. That was CJ just making sure Mamer knows how close he is. That's all that was. Oh yeah, he knows he's there. He can hear him. Thundering through turn one once again. And again, within a truck length, Cole Mamer, CJ Greaves. We'll see this last lap. CJ tried to set up this outside in, but Mamer is just running the perfect line. He's not quite leaving enough of the bottom side open for CJ to get that run. Oh, and that time they made some contact. Yeah, a little bit of contact. That was a little kiss on the back bumper. Like he said, he wants to know he's there. So maybe CJ is starting to try to rattle the cage here of Cole Mamer. Mamer, for his part, has not really made any mistakes so far. At least none big enough for CJ to capitalize on. CJ's been starting this little momentum 
push here through the finish line turn. He had a better line going through Argon Loop. We'll see if he gets a drive. He's fighting that bottom line. Just hits that berm. That costs him a little bit more. Rare mistake there from CJ, but that just shows you that he is really pushing hard right now to try to take this win away from Cole Mamer. Here comes CJ Greaves again. He got a really nice drive out of the Cowboy corner. Once again, almost nose to tail as they come into turn one. This isn't over yet. CJ is just going to work right now on Mamer. Trying to find that little bobble, that little mistake. He goes over the cushion for a little bit. That's all it takes, a couple seconds. He can pick his pocket. Mamer has just been that consistent though so far. I think my eyes would tell me that CJ is a little bit faster, but this hasn't had the opportunity like you were saying a moment ago. CJ still hard at work, trying to steal it away from Mamer. Mamer again slides out, bangs into the cushion. One minute to go that time by, so two laps to go. Can Mamer hold on? Again, takes a peek to the inside. Not gonna happen there. We'll see if he tries to force the issue in Cowboy Corner. Again, Mamer doing just enough to play defense. And oh, Mamer might oh, have stalled man. the truck. He now did. CJ so stalled did. the truck. Yeah, CJ Green stalled it. There's his father, Johnny, had to go around him. That's what's tough. Yeah, the steam virtually gone out of the 35, so we know that truck running a little bit hot here on the final lap. Well, one turn to go, Shane, for Cole Mamer. It's been a long time coming for him. He's gonna be a happy race car driver if he can negotiate this final right-hander. Well, he can coast it across from here. Cole Mamer, your winner here in Pro 4, round 13. And the Hall of Famer, Johnny Greaves, across the line in second. Let our drivers collect themselves a little bit. Let's take a look at our GoPro moment of the day here from round 13. And well, well, look who it is, Mr. Brent Smith, trying to uh, lock it up here in Pro Light. We saw that smoke towards the end. We knew something was going a little bit wrong for you, Brent. Yeah, it started heating up a little bit. I couldn't see anything about it, but that back suspension, it got tucked with about three laps to go. I came off the player's flyway jump and it just sucked all that suspension in. And he stayed right down to the bottom. Funk gave you a little push there, but there was nowhere he could go. Cole, just uh, what words do you have? What's coming to you right now? Man, at the end of the day, we, you know, we've had a rough two years in this class. Everybody has seen it. We've been leading a lot of races and we haven't been able to finish it out, you know? And uh, today, coming from the second row, I don't think anybody has ever hole shot it from the second row. And that Roush Performance motor packed by Yokohama tires pulled that whole shot off, let me tell you. But, but man, my crew, this is for you guys, man. You guys have been busting your ass. And uh, we did it, boys, we did it. We we knew if we could get into second, we had a good truck and a really fast truck, and we could put on a show for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Cole and I were just running our hearts out out there, just throwing it in. It's one guy would throw it in harder the next lap, and then you would chase him and be like, well, I got to throw it in harder than he did if I'm going to stay there. So. To stay connected, follow Amzoel Championship Off-Road on all of our social media channels for the latest news and content and get ready for next year. Championship Off-Road kicks off the 2025 season May 2nd through the 4th in Wheatland, Missouri.